Hi. I feel so tall. You look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions. It's I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. It's the It's so juicy. Oh, okay. Let's go. Bang! Go! Follow us on the description below. Today we're doing a movie review of the Telugu film. I think it's a 2018 film, Rajasthanalism. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Which is, I believe, what I corbinize. Yeah, you right? corbinize it, and I love uh, it. Rajasthanalism. I was here to stay. Rajasthanalism. Rajasthanalism. 1985, I believe, is the actual name. Yeah, I think. Rangasthanam, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure. It's directed by Su Sukumar. Uh, and star it's starring a bunch of people, but uh, the, the main two leads are Ram Charan and uh, say her name for me Samantha Ekanini. And then there's a couple other people, uh, but it, it's a big. Um, uh, ensemble cast, but it's mainly Ram Charan. He's obviously the the lead in this. Um, it's gonna be a hundred spin spoiler review. If you haven't watched it, uh, I think most of you have because it's been the second most requested Telugu film, basically next to Bahubali Two. Uh, and normally I would ask Rick what his initial thoughts were. I know his initial thoughts, and so I'm just gonna preface you right now. If you are in for a, if you just like to see reviews. That agree with what you what you what you think. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you, don't watch it. <laughs> uh, I just want to I just want to let you know, you're you're more than entitled to your opinion to love this yes, film yes. and think it's the best film ever. You're here to see our opinion. And That's so right. This will be, and we're always gonna be honest. And so this is ours. But first, I know Rick hated it. Um, I'm not gonna say I loved it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say I liked it. Uh, but I do want to start with the stuff I did like, so it doesn't. Me just too, because there is uh, some thing, There are some things that I liked. Yeah, because I don't want to just just be a negative review. I hate when it, that happens. Me too. Uh, first and foremost, I think this is one of the best shot films. It's a beautiful. The cinematography it's is an absolutely gorgeous film. It's, so is the sound. Yes, the sound and the cinematography is exceptional. Uh, it's I don't know what kind of camera they shot it on, but it was. It was absolutely gorgeous. And most of the time as well, I thought the score, even though the placement of it sometimes yeah. by the director I didn't agree with, yeah. I thought the score for the most part was quite pretty. Yeah. Well done. The song numbers were are, yeah. are the best part of the film. Yeah, and I, we reacted to a couple of those song numbers. Yeah. Uh, and, and, it's, and, we, and we went into this knowing this was a, a mass, masa, almost masala-ish kind mm -hmm. of film. Right, right. We, um, we, yeah, by the way, we have been... Um, one of the things that Corbin's been doing, which is very helpful, is he gets an idea from the stupid family that helps make the decision on the films, and he'll give me an idea about what we're going into. So, for example, I don't need to be prepped by anything if we're watching Satyajit Rai or Sanjay Leela Bansali. We kind of know where we've been. We may get surprised, but we yeah. kind of know what to expect. But because so many things are varied, it's important to not go into a film when your mindset is in film festival circuit, but what you're going to get is just popcorn entertainment. Yeah. And because so then I put an unfair uh, impression on the film before it starts. So he gave me an idea for it. He's like, hey, this is not award winning stuff here. We're watching a film that we're going to just enjoy uh, the, 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 the movie entertainment aspect of it. I told the bitch, try to, try to go into having fun, is what I'm saying. Exactly. Just enjoy so yourself. I'm, I'm just letting you preface we're, we're not, we weren't trying to think this was an Oscar film. Because um, I think some people think that we think every film needs to be an Oscar film. And, and we don't. That's not and I case. think if you saw our review for War, you'd know we. <laughs> We don't feel that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, even Ludo, as great as we thought Ludo was, it yeah. was more of a film oh, yeah. that we enjoyed because it was just a fun It was a really fun, fun film. film. The, the other thing uh, was uh, Samantha Akineni. Who, yeah, who, who played Rama Laksh Lakshmi, right? Yeah, she played Lakshmi, and you recognized her, yes? I did. It was Ego, right? And? What? The larger thing we've seen her in the most. What? Family Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She was one of my favorite actresses in it, for sure. She was... Um, the, yeah. Hers was the only acting role in it that, for me, I gravitated toward. And like, also the actor who played her brother. Um, but we'll get into her brother? that in a second. Yeah. Yeah, her brother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I did really enjoy her. I think she has great screen presence. Uh, and actually, a lot of people in this film do have really great screen presence, um, but we have obviously other issues there. There was a bunch of scenes that I did really enjoy, um, but those were, I think, uh, more few and far between. There's one main issue in this film 
that I think if you would have changed that, I think it would have been at least an enjoyable film. And I know you might not agree. Uh, but yeah, I don't agree. Yeah, <laughs> no. I think uh, probably the main issue for me was the choice that Ram Charan made. Uh, with Because it's clearly a choice that him and the director made of what style they decided to go for for this character, which was a very, I don't know how you would describe it, cartoony depiction of somebody with a hearing disability. Um, That's a good way to... It was very cartoony, and that was probably my... And there was, I had more issues, but that was probably my biggest issue was the fact that the rest of this, for the most part, I'm not saying they were the ground, like, grounded, like, um, Kobology Knights. <laughs> I don't know. But, no, uh, I'm saying the rest of them were at least more realistic. Everyone else was a little more realistic. He was almost chaplain. He was trying to be, like, like very... Vaudevillian, well, over the top. It was like, over the top. But, huh? But like, yeah, what? But, like, I didn't... There was also it that... It just didn't fit to me. There was also that... At, there was an added <clears throat> element that wasn't just slapsticky and over the top and cartoony because those <clears throat> are the things that are commiserate to some of the things that you consider like with the Three Stooges. Yeah. Where, you know, Chaplin really didn't get... Well, a whole other animal there with Charlie Chaplin. But... but Chaplin, that, the, the, yeah, that was the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of, of, the, of the time. Yeah. That was the standard of the day, per se. And, and he, that was the world he built in that film. Exactly. And the Tramp was always that kind of a, a character. And there was always... I mean, one of my favorite actors of all time in that era is Oliver Hardy, who always broke the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. Stan Laurel would do something stupid, and Oliver Hardy would look at everybody and go... Mm. Yeah. Uh, the thing of, in addition to that was... Uh, because here's why it didn't work for a couple of reasons. One, it wasn't a stylistic choice for the director for the entire ensemble like we got in DevDas. Yeah. It was a singular event with this. They wanted, well, they want, there were a few there times There were a few others. other people as well. But, but not, when you compared it to Samantha, yeah. it, was, it was oil and water comparatively yeah. stylistically as actors. That was probably the strangest thing for me. And the one that just kept taking me out of, of enjoying it. Because I'm like, I, I, I don't, I mean... Look, I know it was the choice of him and the director to make this, like, to sh kind of him trying to be normal, so he over-accentuates, and I know why they did it. It just didn't work for me. Me too. It didn't uh, and so it just kept taking me out of every single moment when he was being this happy, blah, 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 and, like, I'm like, you're not in reality right now. No, and here... And the rest of this is trying to give me a different reality than the reality you're giving me. And, right and let me give you an, an, an addish, a, additional comparison of, of his choices... That will be happy for those of you who are of the hashtag justice for Ranbir. Because I'm going to make a comparison to Barfi. Oh, yeah. And where Ranbir was doing a lot of uh, complimentary buffoonery that was mm -hmm. of the silent era and the Three Stooges kind yeah, of comedy. Sure. But what he did within that context, I didn't see with Ram's choices. Because what I saw with Ram's choices, there was... And this wasn't a subjective thing on my, my point. I've been watching actors and know enough about the art form to know... I would be shocked if he gave you any other answer, uh, if he was being honest about it, that a huge number, the majority of the decisions that he made as an actor, he did knowing he was being watched. Yeah. There's one thing to make a comedic decision because mm -hmm. the, you know the audience is going to find it funny. It's another one where basically every choice you're making, you know you're being watched by an audience. Yeah. And with a film that seemed to be serious a lot of the time and wanted to be serious a lot of the time and, yeah. and a grounded performance by Samantha Ekeneni, it just, it stuck out like a, like a sore thumb it and did. not a good way. Yeah, it did. And, yeah. and the reason why I said I think that would have changed it for me is because even though I had problems with the second half, I enjoyed it a lot more than the first because that shtick almost went away. But I basically, after, so once again, spoiler. Uh, once his brother died, mm -hmm. and it basically became John Wick, right? Right. Uh, and I was like, yeah. that's what I was actually really hoping for. I was like, okay, just be John Wick and just kill people, just just do that. Uh, and so that that I'm not saying I fully enjoyed the second half, but I enjoyed it more because the there wasn't really that shtick of his of huh? What did you say? Speak up, please. It, it just it, it took me out of it. There was only like two instances where I thought I was like, okay, that was funny, and it was when he was sneaking into the house and he thought he was being quiet and just everything was being loud around him. Mm -hmm. That's like the only time I actually liked it. And I was like, okay, if you just kept that one moment and then kind of 
which was obviously heightened kind of a shtick mm -hmm. and then kind of toned it down the rest of the time, I think that would have been way better. Mm -hmm. That's my choice. Yeah. Uh, and just, once again, yeah. my personal preference is just that it just didn't work for me to be his, his performance. No, it didn't. And, yeah. and, and I don't, and it's, it's not just a choice as well. I mean, it's just, it, uh, anyway, we don't need to harp on it for a long time. Yeah. The, the other thing for me, but uh, cause there's a lot, yeah, yeah. there's a lot for me and I don't want to spend the time just ragging on things at all. But, uh, not a but, because that negates what I just said. <laughs> In addition, I, I um, pain at storylines that are sophomorically predictable in ways that grow definitively frustrating for me when you want to see... Obviously, you want to see cinema elevated at an artistic level in ways that are magnificent that not every film can be nor should be because there is room and there is a place for just pure entertainment and enjoyment but when we're talking about something like this film where i felt like for three hours i knew what you know here we go uh someone's gonna hurt somebody's sensitivities and they're gonna insult somebody's family member and they're gonna get mad and someone's gonna slap somebody and then that person's gonna get mad and they're gonna hit them and while they're getting beat up, a guy's going to have to say, hey, catch him and beat him up while he's being beat up. And then he'll go back and then the girl who thought he loved him, he'll get mad at her and hit her. And then we'll wonder if they're going to be together. And then when she talked to him for the first time as well, he got all like a nine-year-old kid and was like, oh my goodness, she smiled at me. And uh, I, it, it just that we can make an entire film based on a premise like that, which it really, that's pretty much what it was. And we've got the... A stereotypical bad guy who's being mean to everybody, and then you find out he's even worse than he was. I, it, it just storyline and everything. I don't, I don't understand why we would want to t spend. You have a limited number of minutes on the planet. Why you'd want to spend it? For me, it's just cinematically the intelligence quotient is so low that it is, it is not only not enjoyable for me. It's infuriating for me because there's so many other films that deserve to have attention and deserve to be watched and deserve to be talked about from all over the world that when I watch a film that just doesn't hit it on any cylinder for me becomes a transcendent annoyance, disappointment to the point of a deep angering for me in terms of, I, I was going to, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to make a dramatic thing over it, but it reminded me, and I was going to read it, it reminded me of the scene in Hamlet where Hamlet captures basically in the room Gertrude and he points out to her can do you realize do you realize what you're doing you've sacrificed everything when you had let me let me show you two pictures you had this one and he gives all of these descriptions about his dad and this picture and he says but you gave it up for this one and he goes to the grand extremes to explain the difference in the two uh, metaphorical pictures of his biological dad who was murdered and she knew and was complicit in it so that she could be with this, why would you even invest your time in this picture? And that was the metaphor I was gonna give, is when there are so many other films that are, are meritorious and worth exploring and worth talking about and celebrating, why would you wanna watch a film other than my, you know, the group of people I hang out with think it's great and if you don't agree with us, you're stupid, which is really a metaphor of the film. The film itself is a metaphor for itself in that for 30 years, things have been the way that they are. Anybody who says anything against it you either get killed or kicked out. So everybody just says, this is the way things are. Mm. And I feel that way about some movies. It's like, you just didn't get it. You just don't like it. Rather than, wait a minute, is there some relevance to what you're saying about this? And I, the majority of you who love this film are going to write me off as being arrogant, stupid. Uh, why do we even need that white guy's affirmation? And okay, whatever. I'm never going to be dishonest with you because I care too much about the art form and truth. I think he's an idiot too. Not for this, for everything else. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I do want to say just a few more things, uh, and I do agree. Um, but the there was a few scenes that I did enjoy when when his brother was being chased in the cornfield. I thought that that section of it, where <laughs> he was. <laughs> defying physics and, and everything and, was defied i mean but yeah but he got sliced up how many times and he didn't bleed out to death i just yeah uh but in this film i i enjoyed that scene of it i thought it won once again onto the cinematography shot very well beautiful the cinematography uh, was I top would, notch i wish it would have ended way differently the opening scene which one <laughs> 
I thought we were off for a great ride with the very opening car crash. Oh, yeah. Cinematography-wise, and him coming out of the door and hitting his face on the rock. The I cinematography was like, that opening shot was remarkable. Yeah, the, the cinematographers are rough. Roth Novello. A phenomenal yeah. job. Uh, and the lighting crew, yeah. everybody on production uh, was absolutely incredible. Gorgeous film. Definitely, the, in our opinion, the best, best part about the film. So, once again, uh, if you like the film, I once again hope you weren't already here or you're understanding that uh, people have different opinions than you do. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let us know what the next Telugu film uh, we should watch uh, and uh, review should be uh, down Yeah. Be nice.